Hi everyone, my name is Joanna Rousel-Shand and I'm an ambassador for Adarans in the UK. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about my activity with them and how it forms part of their CSR. So a bit of a background to me. Um, I am a relatively recently retired member of the GB cycling team. So I spent 10 years as part of the GB cycling team since leaving school, aged between 18 and 28. And I went to two Olympic Games and won two Olympic gold medals in track cycling. So that was all good. Um, but I also have alopecia, which is hair loss, so that's why I wear wigs. And I've had alopecia for as long as I can remember, but I properly lost all my hair when I was 10 years old. So um, obviously the majority of my life um, has spent living with alopecia. And that's definitely something I found difficult to deal with when I was younger, but I always had the attitude that I didn't want to look back on my life with regrets and look back and realise that I'd not taken opportunities due to things like shyness. So I sort of gave myself a bit of a talking to when I was younger and told myself, it's a cliche but you only live once, and you know, why not sort of embrace opportunities um, rather than being worried of what people might think of you. So one of my mottos was always focus on what you can control because I can't control what people think of me or what people's impressions are but I can control how hard I work, how, you know, my focus, whether that's on academic things or whether that's on sport. Um, so focusing on sport was actually a really good way of sort of distracting me uh, from the condition that I had. So I progressed quite rapidly as part of the GB cycling team, having been talent spotted as a teenager, found myself in the senior programme aged 18 having left school. Um, and very quickly, within nine months of joining the senior programme, I became world champion at the Women's Team Pursuit back in 2008. So that was awesome. Uh, but when I compete, I don't wear a wig, mainly because it is a little bit cooler. And, you know, when you're trying to be the best in the world at something, you want to minimise any little things that are going to slow you down. So for me, I compete without wearing a wig. Um, and then when it comes to um, going on the podium after a race, I'd also then go up without wearing a wig as well. And that's something that... Not many people sort of were too bothered about early on in my career. Um, there weren't too many questions asked and it sort of reinforced what I'd always told myself about no one else really cares that much. Just focus on myself, focus on what I can control. I can't control other people's reactions, but in reality, no one's really that bothered. So that was all good. Uh, but fast forward to London 2012, my first Olympic Games. Oh my God, I had no idea what to expect there whatsoever. Obviously here, going on the podium to collect my medal, um, watched by millions of people on TV, which um, is fantastic, but I was completely inundated with messages, social media, emails, everything. People telling me that I was a hero for not being afraid to show my alopecia, to be able to go on the podium without wearing a wig. And I was like, wow, I was completely overwhelmed by the whole thing. Um, just, just competing in Olympic Games and winning an Olympic gold medal is a big deal in itself. But to do that as well with that added sort of media spotlight that I had as well was also quite quite challenging. Um, definitely found that challenging at the time as a 23 year old. But as I've got older, I've sort of learned to embrace that and sort of embrace raising awareness of alopecia, something that I'm quite keen to do. So me personally, I wear wigs day to day because I like them. I like the look of them. I love the different colours and styles. I love how I can have my hair however I want it. And I really enjoy um, that side of things. So I got involved with Adarins um, back after 2012, started wearing their wigs um, and gradually have had more and more involvement with them over the years. So now I'm retired, I'm able to do a lot more with them as part of their CSR activity. So as an ambassador, I do things that go along to support group meetings, which we have up and down the country. So there are various different stores around the UK. I'll go along, we'll have a support group meeting for people with hair loss, so not just alopecia, but also ke chemotherapy as well. And I'll sort of meet and chat to people and chat about me and my story and let them chat about themselves and you know how they're coping with hair loss, where they are on their journey. And that's really nice and it's really also quite eye-opening for me to see how different people cope and how different ages it affects people differently. I think I always assumed that um, developing the condition very young would be harder, but actually I think often a lot of people that are develop it when they're older actually struggle far more. So that's also been quite eye-opening for me to see how other people cope with alopecia and other forms of hair loss. Uh, we also do other different things and then the models are often people who either have alopecia or who have had chemotherapy and they can wear wigs or not as part of the fashion show uh, and it's just a really nice sort of inclusive evening and it's all about raising awareness as well as raising money for the charities that they're supporting so it's been quite a sort of organic process with Adarans to be able to sort of develop their CSR activity 
and to begin with you know we've, we've sort of learned from each other and we've learned how we can help each other we both have got the ambition of raising awareness of alopecia and understanding because I think there's so many so many misconceptions around hair loss so it's been good for me to be able to work with the company um, and because we share common goals um, so that's been really good and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day today Lester thanks